How's it going guys? I feel like I've said this in like last four videos, but it's been a while. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Maddie and I just graduated with my master's finally after four years post-grad. Um, I will do another video on that if you guys are interested, but this video is going to be about my experience completing my dietetic internship or clerkship at a VA hospital. So for those of you who are familiar with our channel, I am back in Ohio. I am done with my clerkship in Florida. Um, like I said, I've graduated. It is currently snowing right now and honestly I could not be happier to be back here with Chase and Nooch um, and close to my family. You know, the Florida heat was getting to me a little bit. But I had an awesome time and I'm so grateful that I did it. My internship was eight months long and I was going four days a week most days from about eight to four, um, give or take, depending on the dietitian I was working with. But most of the time at the VA at least, um, the standard schedule is eight to 4.30. Uh, but um, I was working eight to four, which was nice. It was unpaid. Um, I know a lot of times the VA pays their interns. Uh, I just happened to follow, fall on a weird year where the um, partnership program between my school and the VA or um, any school and a VA what came to an end and the VA itself was actually in the process of creating their own internship. So they were taking the funds that they were paying their interns and kind of holding them um, and using them to create their own internship so i just happened to fall in that transition year which uh was very disappointing because i was excited to be paid um it actually turned out that it would have been about 15 dollars an hour which is fantastic in my book um especially because i was required to be there uh, for about a thousand hours so that would have been fifteen thousand dollars that i unfortunately missed out on but um it's okay and you know, I don't know if that's standard across the country, but um, that may be something that you should look into. So just something to think about. But I, like I said, I was going to class or I was going to um, work my internship four days a week, Monday through Thursday. And then on Fridays, I had class from about 10 to five every single Friday. So I started off my internship in March and I started right off the bat with food service, which was great. I got it out of the way. Um, no hard feelings to food service. I actually had a great time. I did a lot of independent work um, and I got to really make an impact, which was cool. Um, but food service was four weeks long and I was just working in the kitchen at the VA hospital. So I did all sorts of things. I created projects. I did like cost benefit analyses. Um, I was on the tray line. I was doing stocking, um, inventory, etc. So um, I really got to see the whole breadth of food service, which was cool. Then I moved straight into med surge or MNT1 for five weeks. And this was honestly crazy. My VA just happened to be super short staffed at the time. So it was actually one dietitian covering the whole floor plus the ICU unit. So they had, um, I'm trying to think, three or four units plus the ICU. And that was just covered by one dietitian and me um, and a diet tech but I learned a ton just getting thrown in like that. So um, I'm not sure if I would recommend it, but it, it helped me a lot in the long run. So then after those five weeks, um, we had about a two, two and a half weeks off, two weeks off. And then we came back and did our um, outpatient rotations. So I did two weeks of community, which were basically just doing all the classes that the VA had to offer. I did the MOVE program, which is like a long-term weight loss um, class, both in person and virtual. And then I also helped out with the Healthy Teaching Kitchen, which is like an interactive um, teaching class once or a couple times a week um, where you educate, you hold a class educating people on um, eating healthy and then you cook a dish in front of them and then they get to eat it, which is pretty cool with like a mobile kitchen. Um, that's my favorite. And then we also did um, some diabetes clinic classes um, as well as helping, there was a new GI clinic that was kind of coming to fruition. They were in the planning phases. So we helped develop some materials for the GI clinic. Um, after our two weeks of community, I did two weeks of just general outpatient, which was really interesting to see. I wasn't sure what I was going to see. 
um, but it really was just just like anything that you can imagine. Um, I saw my youngest patient there, which was um, a woman, which is not common in the VA, and she was in her 20s, so that was pretty cool. General outpatient really opened my eyes to just like the day-to-day -day struggles that veterans face, um, whether it's homelessness or amputations or eating disorders. That was something that really surprised me was um, that I learned about in the outpatient setting was that how prevalent eating disorders are in our veteran population. So um, if you're a dietitian or a dietetic student who's interested in eating disorders, the VA population is actually pretty heavily impacted by eating disorders. So um, not something that I was expecting, but really interesting, really sad, um, but definitely a place that we as dietitians can make a huge impact. Um, I then spent one week in the hospital's long-term care facility. It's basically a nursing home slash hospice unit um, in the hospital. It's really cool. Um, the veterans are great. They would just like knock on the door, stop by, say hi. Um, it was a really awesome community down there. So that was a lot of fun. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about like nursing home, but um, at the VA at least I, I really enjoyed myself. Um, I feel like you're going to hear me say that a lot through this video. There was nothing that I didn't like, um, which is, you know, a blessing and a curse. Uh, I spent one week in the diabetes clinic. Um, I spent one week in the oncology clinic. Uh, that was seeing people both kind of in an outpatient setting and as well as while they were getting chemo treatments. Um, I have not had experience working with people who were, you know, actively receiving radiation or chemotherapy, so that was... A really interesting setting to do that in. Um, as sad as it is, it was, um, they were a really positive population and I enjoyed working with them a lot. It was uh, really cool to see the huge impact that nutrition has on that population. I spent two weeks doing renal, which was super cool. You, um, it was like all of this is in the hospital, so it's all in the same building, but dialysis was either inpatient or outpatient. So for that, I was just covering the people who were coming in outpatient um, a couple days a week, and that was a lot of fun. I really liked the structure of it because it was flexible. You could kind of make your own schedule for the day, go see people, um, and you just basically had to see everybody within the month. So. Uh, it was a lot of nutrition counseling. The team was amazing. Um, I just have nothing but awesome things to say about renal. I learned a ton and it, it really is not intimidating. So like a great skill to have as a dietitian is renal. So just keep that in your back pocket. I also spent some time um, in the domiciliary, which is the long-term, or I guess it's not long-term, it's like a residential one to two month um, program people who have issues with the law or substance use disorder and they come and they stay and it's like a rehab program it is like super comprehensive so they're getting like nutrition information psychiatric and psychological um, help um, just like anything and everything that they could need they're getting it while they're there to make sure that when they graduate from the program that they are ready to roll and helping them transition back into society so that was also one of my one of my favorites which I'll touch on later um, we I was just teaching classes during that time um, and then I also spent two weeks doing home-based which was so unique I had no idea that it existed but basically what we did was we would go we would get in a car every morning and we would drive to nursing homes or people's actual homes or um, medical foster homes so, and we would go there and we would do nutrition assessments um, and provide people with anything nutritionally that they needed. Um, so, like I said, we could go to nursing homes if they didn't have a dietitian on staff, or we would go to the veterans' homes, say they maybe aren't super comfortable driving anymore. Uh, we could just go there, it was really cool. We could like hang out with the veterans and the veterans' pets, um, just like in their own home, which was super nice because they weren't stressed, uh, they were just you know, chilling in their recliner and um, you're just asking them questions and they offer you food and whatnot, which we didn't take, but uh, it, it was really cool. Then there's something called medical foster homes, which people, just like everyday people, open their homes up to veterans to stay with them either um, short or long term. And it's literally like a foster home and I think they get paid for it and 
they just like live with you and it's just so they have somebody to live with um, maybe they need help maybe they're not super mobile or maybe they just don't want to live by themselves their spouse passed away um, and or the foster person's spouse passed away and they just want somebody to live with um, it's a it's a really awesome program that kind of the people have like a symbiotic relationship everybody seemed super happy um, it was it was really, really, really cool to see. I had no idea that that existed and honestly made me want to open up my home to veterans who may may need something like that. Um, it just helps them, you know, get the things they need, get grocery shopping done. Um, and it's, it's, it was kind of fun. Like they had uh, a lot of the veterans would like treat the, the person's kids or grandkids, um, usually grandkids, as if like they were their grandkids, which was super cool and like everybody just had a really good relationship. So it was awesome. Um, home base was like super fascinating. So then that was the summer. Then we had like two and a half weeks off, which was amazing. And then we came back and I did five weeks of high acuity and three weeks of ICU. But at the VA, um, not a lot of the things that we're seeing is like super high acuity. So what we did was um, anything that like came into feeding wise, I would just take it. So whether or not it was ICU or high acuity, I was just taking them. Um, anything that was like a four, basically, for those of you who know what that means. Um, so just like the super severe nutrition cases. Um, and that was basically eight weeks of just working on the floor and um, ICU, which was fun. Um, except for the fact that it was super, super slow during those, uh, during, <laughs> during that time. So I was literally seeing like two patients a day, but that was okay because that semester was very stressful and I was able to get a ton of school work done during that time. And I feel like I learned a lot and it was, um, it was very flexible. So that was great. And then to finish off the whole thing, I did three weeks of staff relief. So going back to the domiciliary, I did most of my staff relief in the domiciliary. The VA just happened to um, not have a dietitian there uh, during that time. And so um, I was able to cover it and that was my favorite, favorite, favorite rotation. Um, I really, because I spent so much time there, I got to know the people, who, the veterans really well, um, the staff there really well. I, it was like, um, I was teaching classes every day, which I love teaching classes, at least one class, sometimes two, and then also doing like nutrition assessments or just making sure that everybody's getting what they needed. Um, there were like people who did have tube feeds or people who were MPO that were there just because um, they're getting medical care at the same time that they're getting their treatment. So um, it was, it was a very interesting mix, but everybody's ambulatory. So it, it was just like a unique experience. Um, and like I said, I just got to know everybody super well. So that was my time. Um, just some pros and cons of working at the VA. Pros, obviously, as I'm sure you can tell, I love the veterans. They were a fantastic population. I wasn't sure how it was gonna be. Um, they were great. Uh, and like I said, I got to work. I was, I was very independent. I love working independently. Um, dietitians are very well respected at the VA. And so it just felt like I was a um, respected member of the team and was really making a difference, which was cool. Some cons were, um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, there's not a lot of breadth at the VA. So it's not like I was seeing peds, it's not like I was seeing sports nutrition, um, that I wasn't in like specialized clinics. Um, I wasn't going to different locations like a lot of my classmates were, um, which is a pro and a con because I was going to the same place every day for eight months. But, um, like I said, I didn't see a lot of women and I didn't see a lot of young people. So most of the people that I saw were men, 60 and up. Um, but, you know, it was it really was a great experience. And that depended on the clinic that you're at. You know, if you're in a hospital, that's kind of the population that you're seeing anyways. But um, I really did not see a, a lot of women, which was interesting. Um, another thing is that it is kind of disorganized. Um, it is the government. And so everything moves super slowly. There's not a lot of, um, the communication isn't the best. Um, so it, once you figure that out, it makes it a lot easier to move within the system and um, kind of navigate yourself. So 
I know I've said this a million times, I'm very independent. Once I figured out that I would just be working independently and I kind of needed to advocate for myself and make sure that the things that I needed done were getting done, you just need to stay on top of it. So um, that was just something that if I had known that from the beginning, it would have been a bit more helpful and helped some of the things that uh, maybe didn't go the best, the things that were more frustrating for me, it would have just made it uh, a lot easier just knowing that going into it. But um, so if you're if you're going and doing an internship at the VA, um, that would be my only piece of advice would just be to um, advocate for yourself. But other than that, I had an amazing time. Truly, I am so grateful. I wouldn't, I don't wish that um, it would have been any other way because it was honestly one of the best experiences I've had um, and the best experience I think I've had in healthcare. The continuity of care at the VA is incredible. Um, the resources that they have for veterans is amazing unmatched like it was so cool to be able to see people in the inpatient setting and then the outpatient setting and just like everywhere in between um and referring them to programs and all the programs that they had to offer um, seeing people in the classes who i'd seen inpatient and outpatient so um there really are so many resources and continuity of care is amazing so um if you have any questions about the VA, internships at the VA, etc. Um, let me know and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks.